All right. Now I'm going to go over the source code sketch uh, for the Arducam web interface. Um, basically, these are just some comments that might help you get started and help you use it. Uh, you can use this as you know from another web server to make calls to it. Uh, basically, by using these direct addresses, or you can uh, have a web page on a web server that has an image in there, and the source would just be directed to one of these addresses to pull in either the capture or the stream. And I'll just scroll down here and show you what's going on. Here's just a real simple wiring diagram. Diagram, excuse me, for the way I've got my Arducam Mini uh, connected to the ESP8266. And just shows you a real simple um, diagram there, how to connect uh, each of the pinouts from the camera to the ESP module. All right, here's some libraries you're going to need to run this sketch. And I'm, I'm going to include this source file, um, all the code and all the libraries. I'll make it available to download from GitHub. Uh, so stay tuned for that. It'll just take me a few, a uh, little bit of time to get it up there. But uh, stay tuned. I will post a link on this video to download those files. Uh, anyways, yeah, I need these libraries. I'll just scroll through this stuff really quick. Some constants that are going to be used. Now, this is kind of a key thing you really want to pay attention to. If you're having choppy or distorted video, uh, showing up here you're, you're going to want to change the buffer size now I had this problem on a different ESP module which turned out to be faulty the, the, the ESP8266 was faulty itself the memory in there was, I don't know there was something wrong it kept crashing it would it would uh, have exceptions all the time but anyways I was getting this blocky video using that and uh, while I was working anyways and I would change <clears throat> I changed this down to 2048 and it got better I actually went away for a while but then the memory <laughs> issue got worse um, so I ended up changing it down to 10 or and it worked for a while that way and uh, but eventually I just swapped out and I'm using a different ESP8266 unit which works great at the 4096 buffer size and, and you do want to have a larger buffer size if you can because it's going to make the capturing faster. All right. Now, this does work uh, as a Wi-Fi station, which is what I'm doing right now. So it's connected to my network, and I go to an IP address that I've set up. You can see down here for my network. So that's my Wi-Fi you know, network information right there. Um, it will work as an AP though if you switch this to one and then basically you would connect your phone or your computer uh, to the uh, Wi-Fi station called Arducam ESP8266. You can, you can change this to anything you want but uh, in this case you would just connect to that with your computer and then uh, you might want to open up the control panel not control panel, command line and type in IP config ipconfig and find out what the gateway IP address is and that's what you would use um, basically to connect to it if it's an AP or you could always just look at the serial monitor which is going to show you uh, what the AP is or the, uh, the IP address so in this case it's showing right here and just this gives you an idea of this serial data that uh, is output during capturing and streaming and whatnot. So all this information is really helpful to debug and and just write the program. All right, so that's the buffer size that I want to go over and also the Wi-Fi type. So it'll work both ways in case you're remote and there is no Wi-Fi network to connect to. You can use it as an AP and just connect your phone or laptop to it and uh, have the same functionality. All right, so this is a little file, res text that is used for properties. So basically whatever the last resolution that was submitted is going to be stored into this uh, file. 
So if the power goes out or you reset the unit, it's always going to go back to the last setting that was used. It's going to use that properties file. And some more variables that are used in the program. Also sort of a resolution uh, map here to tell you what the resolutions are. Uh, 3 through or 0 through 8. All your different resolutions. And here we go. We start getting into our different functions. First one, update data file. Now these are not in the order that they're executed. They're kind of almost in the reverse. That's just the way it works with this particular um, IDE, the Arduino IDE. But uh, what you've got here is this is going to update the properties file. So anytime you submit something and it's got a change <clears throat> to the resolution, it's going to open the file and write that resolution into the file. And now you get down to my cam save to spiffs. This is going to take the captured image and save it to the spiffs uh, file space there. And this is basically to check if we've reached the maximum amount of file space. We're not going to. We're going to get out of this. We're going to print a message and get out. And I'll just scroll through this real quick. You guys can see what's going on. Basically captures the image, writes it to the file, and then it prints it out to the client. All right. So load from spiff. So when we try to call one of the, bring up one of the JPEGs we've stored, this is going to basically uh, stream it to the client. Get drop down. Now this is basically just the HTML that is used for the drop down of resolutions. I just kind of break it out because uh, it's kind of long and just makes it easier to read the entire program to break that out. Capture initialization. That's just a real quick initialization feature or function. Cam capture captures the still image and sends it to the client. So whenever you do a refresh or submit and the web page updates, it's going to execute this and update the client. All right. And server capture. This initiates the capture and records the time amount that's used and prints it out to the serial port. Stream video to client. So this is similar to capture function. This is for video streaming. It initiates a video stream uh, and sends it to the client. Now when it is actually streaming video, the Web server won't really respond to any kind of request. If you try to submit anything to it, uh, it's not going to respond, which is why I didn't show the uh, options to do that while it's streaming video. It just sits there. All right. And we get down to handle not found. This is just our basic uh, default handler for the uh, web interface. And it also prints out the default uh, HTML and based upon the different variables that have been set and changed it will show different values in there and here's where it uh, prints out that little file size indicator and up here's where it's uh, printing out a table of all the pictures. And this is just some data that's useful for debugging. We'll show you the uh, total bytes that are used and remaining. And this is the div, the image that uh, contains our uh, captured image. As you can see here. All 
All right, set camera resolution. This is uh, called in several different places basically to set the resolution. Uh, basically, when you submit the form, it's going to take the value. And depending on what it gets, it'll set the resolution. And it's also used during the setup uh, to, after it reads the value from the properties file, it takes it and sets it here. Clear data. This is to clear all the data. There's a link on the interface that uh, you can click. And this goes through the directory and just removes all those files. Cleans it up and resets the variables. Handle form submission. So when you click submit, uh, this is what is going to be executed. And basically it goes through and checks the arguments that go along with the post. And it takes those arguments and changes the different values. Image mode to be stream or capture and the resolution. <coughs> After it uh, gets a new resolution, it updates the properties file. Now this is important here. Um, anytime you change the resolution, as we're doing up here, um, actually in the set cam resolution function, anytime you change the resolution, it's going to take a little time for the white balance to adjust. Now a lot of people have had trouble with dark images. They and that's because every time they go to the or they are setting the resolution, which you don't really need to do, you only need to set it once, and then if you want to change it, you set it again. Um, but when you change it, you're going to want to give it a little delay to allow it time to adjust. That way the white balance will adjust. That is something that I noticed just in using it and did some research on it and found other people having issues and then it just kind of dawned on me because the the first image captured was dark but the subsequent ones as long as I didn't change the resolution again were fine so it kind of just dawned on me that there was some sort of physical time required to update the white balance so you can monkey around with the, the amount of time you know I found you know a second and a half to work pretty well All right. And uh, if it's capture mode, we're going to go ahead and save a picture to memory, file space. If it's streaming mode, we're not. And this just uh, handle not bound is just going to give us our default HTML again. And the main setup function. Now there's quite a bit going on in here. I'll try to go over some of it. Uh, spiffs, this is just so we can use files with the ESP. Uh, you can use this uh, format if you're doing some you know, testing and you want to clear everything off completely, you can do that. Uh, that's kind of why I just leave that in there. It makes it easy to do that. Um, however, when the first time you run this application, it's going to take 30 seconds. It's going to realize that, oh, there's no files here. There's no properties file. There's nothing. So it's going to format SPIFs, which is going to take about 30 seconds. And if you don't have your serial monitor open here, you're not going to necessarily know. You're just going to be sitting there going, well, what's going on? How come I can't access the web server? Well, that's why. The first time, it's going to take that 30 seconds. After there's a file there, it's not going to do that anymore. All right, so it comes down here, and it's going to either read the file and set those properties so it can be used during the execution of the program or if the file didn't exist it's going to go ahead and create that file based upon the default values all right so we'll keep moving on here basically just opening up the serial port to use it and setting our CS pin and some other variables for the uh, camera and these are basically just things I took straight out of the examples that were available from Argicam. And I noticed on the ESP unit that I was having trouble with, uh, it was not detecting this. It, it detects it now every time, but that faulty ESP unit, it was not. 
just some basic setup Set the camera resolution after it's been read from the file and connect to our Wi-Fi either set up the Wi-Fi station or AP mode and then it just sets up our basic handlers for capture stream submit clear so you can go directly to these URLs uh, if you just want to use it on a web server and this is just updating our file count seeing how many files we have so when we create a new one we know what number to give it and updating more variables then we get down to the last function the loop which is just to simply handle the client well that's it everybody I hope you enjoyed the demonstration and I hope some of the uh, things we talked about um, will help you um, if you're having dark screen captures uh, remember the delay or if you're having choppy video or blocky distorted video or captures um, you're gonna want to check your buffer size and uh, hope you like this video please subscribe and give me a like and watch my other videos thanks